be uh, one variable that is uh, quite important, which is heat transfer coefficient h. The heat transfer coefficient will be can be found using some kind of empirical calculation and can be represented in a hand handout or handbook. Okay. Normally, heat transfer coefficient will be represented in terms of dimensionless number called Nusselt number. And Nusselt number here, we learned from last class that we have three kinds or four kinds of Nusselt number. A local Nusselt number, the input, the Nusselt number calculated based on input temperature difference. And then Nusselt number calculated based on the arithmetic mean of temperature difference. And then the last one will be based on logarithmic mean, right? Of three kinds, or four kinds, okay? Normally, each kind, for the Nusselt number, it will be a function of several dimensionless numbers. For example, it will be a function of Raynaud number, because the faster the flow you have in the pipe, the better the heat transfer by convection. So it will be definitely a function of Raynaud number. It is also a function of what we call Prando number. We talked about this number already, right? Did we? Yes? Yeah. Um, during the, the first, very first lecture, I told you that every time you have momentum transport and energy transport at the same time, usually you you see one variable or one dimensionless number called Prando number. And Prando number sometimes or, or most of the time would appear when it, whenever you have convection. Okay? It is function of fluid only. You can write down a Prando number as Cp mu over K. All of them are function of fluid. None of them, none of these three variables is function of system. Unlike in Raynaud number. Raynaud number here is rho d v over mu, right? Three of them, rho v mu, will be a function of fluid. But diameter here is a function of the system. So Prando number will be a little bit different because it is characteristic properties of the fluid. Okay? Then you may have a function of the third uh, dimensionless number, which is called Brinkman number. Brinkman number occurs whenever you have viscous heat. It is a function of viscosity, velocity, and uh, thermal conductivity. Okay? If viscous heat is in, unimportant, then you can just drop the Brinkman number. And then in some flow, in flow in the closed conduit, it may be a function of length over diameter. This is another dimensionless number representing the system. Okay? And the last one will, be, will, will occur whenever you have change or significant change of viscosity in the system. For example, if your fluid is flowing the pipe, fluid that is in close contact with the pipe surface supposed to have different viscosity than the fluid right in the middle. Okay? So viscosity B here is bulk viscosity, viscosity in the bulk area of the fluid. And viscosity zero here is a viscosity near the surface or in the area of film resistance. Okay? Example of this function are the following here. In the textbook, the textbook gives you only two examples, one for turbulent flow, the other for laminar flow. Both of them are represented for the flow in circular pipe. Okay? For turbulent flow, this is very, 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 very famous um, empirical equation that you will use again in unit operation three. Okay? You will use it in order to calculate the heat transfer coefficient because Nusselt number is function, um, the heat transfer coefficient is in the Nusselt number. Okay? So whenever you want to calculate the heat transfer in the circular pipe, usually we pick up this equation for highly turbulent flow. 
Okay? As you can see, it is function of Raynaud number, Prandtl number, and viscosity difference. But in this equation, Brinkman number is neglected because normally we, we rarely consider Brinkman number. For lamina flow, the equation will look something like this. Just one of the equation that will be given to you in a handout or handbook and that you can, you can find it various form of empirical uh, equation for Nusselt number. If you have a flow in pipe which is not circular, for example, if you have flow in annular form, the equation will be totally different. So you will need to find equation like this for specific system, right? That will be taught in the first part of unit operation three. Because, yeah, I, I just leave it here. The rest will be covered in unit operation three. Now, for today, I'm going to give you one example about macroscopic balance for energy transport. Suppose you have a pipe, a circular pipe, and the input fluid into the pipe is air at 70 degree Fahrenheit, one atmospheric pressure, and then the flow rate is given as 70 pound per hour. Flow into the pipe here. The pipe wall here is heated. That means the temperature of the wall is kept to be 250 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So you can compare, you can see the inlet temperature is much lower than temperature of the wall. So the longer the pipe, the higher the temperature of the air coming out, right? The problem asks, if you want to heat the air until the bulk temperature appears to be 230, how long does it need? How long of the pipe do you need? Basically, this is unit operation um, problems. How can we start? How do we do it? If you try to use what you have learned from principal calculation, you can take a balance, input minus output equal to zero at steady state, right? The input can be calculated based on the temperature or enthalpy of the incoming fluid. You know the fluid, you know the temperature, if you look it up in the, in the textbook, you may have, you may find, you may find the heat capacity. Then you can calculate enthalpy, right? For output, it's the same. You know the same kind of fluid, the temperature is changed. You can look it up, calculate enthalpy. Then you have input minus output. However, in this system, the heat will be transferred from the wall into the fluid. So there will be heat transfer all over the place here along the way. Amount of heat transfer here is unknown. It's not known. It's not even constant. At the inlet, the temperature difference between wall and the fluid inside is great. You have 250 and 70 degree difference. But around here, the temperature difference will be much lower. So therefore, amount of heat transfer locally in the inlet part will be much higher than the outlet part, right? Not even that you do, you do not know the amount of heat, you do not even know how it distributed. So what, what can we do? But first and foremost, no, normally we we would like to know the properties of fluid, all right? So that you can look it up 
find Nassau number. In order to find Nassau number in this problem, because in this problem, heat would be heat can be calculated from the Newton law of cooling H A delta T. And if you use delta T log log mean, H here will be H log mean, right? H here must be calculated using the some kind of empirical equation or using chart. In your textbook, there will be a chart given that you can calculate Nasser number as well. All right. So no matter what kinds of em empirical equation you use, you will normally need to know flow rate. You need to know Reynolds number. Okay. But in order to find Reynolds number, you need to know physical properties like density, viscosity, and velocity of your fluid. Right. Now. Question is, suppose I like to find Reynolds number so that I can find Nusselt number later. Reynolds number is function of density and viscosity. But density and viscosity right now change with respect to position. The density viscosity change with respect to temperature mostly. But your temperature, the fluid temperature change with respect to position in this problem. So how can we approximate Reynolds number? You can do in detail find Reynolds number at different position and you, you see that the fluid would flow, would slow down because the density would be higher and higher. I'm, I'm sorry, the fluid would, would go faster and faster because density is less and less as it go longer and longer. Right? Or you can make approximation that suppose you would like to find average Reynolds number for the, for the system. The average Reynolds number can be calculated based on the average properties of the fluid. The term average means the, let's, let's see, you can find the average number of temperature from inlet and outlet. Suppose you have the In the textbook here, they will make approximation of what we call film temperature. And it is represented by TF. Okay. 